hi there. So this is just a little disclaimer before the Q&A starts. Um, it's about two hours long, <laughs> first of all. And second of all, I had originally recorded it um, with a PowerPoint I made with all the questions on it and uh, a few pictures and examples and stuff like that. But my screen recorder just completely gave out on me, deleted everything. And because of the length of the video and um, the extremely limited recording time I have, I'm not able to redo it um, unless I was going to take a couple more weeks in order to get it out. So I hope you guys can still enjoy it, even though it is missing the, um, the visuals. I don't think it's necessary, but anyways, I thought I'd say something before it starts. Um, thank you for listening, and I hope you guys enjoy. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my second Q&A. This one's a little bit overdue, but I'm re excited to be recording it anyways. Um, if you can't see the screen right now, this is going to be long. My PowerPoint is over 130 slides long, um, and I've condensed a lot of the questions. I've removed some duplicates. Uh, <laughs> so get a, get a cup of tea, find a nice movie, maybe crochet something, draw something, I don't care. Um, you know, listen to it in the background, and hopefully everybody won't be <laughs> incredibly bored to death by uh, the 45th minute. So, um, with that being said, I'm going to try to go a little bit fast so that it isn't a three-hour video. Um, I think my computer would explode exporting that. So, <laughs> uh, let's go ahead. So, the first group of questions I got are all about why I started doing this, and I know I answered this in the last Q&A, um, but pretty much I mainly started listening to content um, over on Reddit, and it was mainly sleep aids. Those really helped me because I've had problems with like, insomnia for a lot of my life, and um, I thought they were super helpful. I thought they were super sweet, and um, I mean, that's, that's really it. I figured that I could probably do that, so I tried, and um, now I do it. Uh, some other questions here. Will I expand, expand as in voice acting for roles outside of ASMR? I'm not sure. I think if the opportunity presented itself to me, it would be, it would be amazing, um, but I don't really know how to start doing any of that, and I'm pretty content in doing what I'm doing now. Um, so let's see, what made you do ASMR? What inspired you to do ASMR? Why did you start voice acting? What got you into making ASMRs? Um, how did you know you wanted to start your channel? What convinced you to start doing YouTube? Uh, YouTube channel about ASMR. Yeah, okay, so I've answered those. More questions about starting the channel. Why have I started? Um, what made you want to start a YouTube and when did you start? So I started about 11 months ago now. Um, I think next month will be the one year anniversary. So <laughs> that's pretty exciting. Oh, okay. Um, these questions about my favorite audios I've made. So your ASMR makes me and many other people feel very special. We love you. Um, my question is what is your favorite video you've done so far? <sighs> It's, it's difficult because it definitely changes. <laughs> Every time I record a video and I go, oh, I put a lot of work into this, but I don't know what people are going to think about it, and then it ends up doing well, it becomes my favorite, favorite audio. Um, right now, I'm pretty proud of the more recent things I've done where I've tried to not just do sleep aids. I love recording sleep aids, but trying to branch out and actually have more of a scenario, like the New Year's one, I like that one. Um, doing more of that, I'm pretty proud of that. So, my favorite type of video to make? Mm, that That's hard. I like making the, the less sleep aid based ones, the more scenario based ones, but they are difficult. And it's a little bit harder for me to get in the, in the zone while recording them, um, because I'm really worried about it sounding natural and stuff like that. So my favorite video to make are probably very calm ones. Um, very just domestic audios. Those are my, my favorite. <laughs> okay. Here's a couple questions that are all asking if I would do, um, NSFW audios. Um, do you ever plan to do NSFW content? 
would you ever do non and uh, sfw audios on your reddit or make a patreon i do have a patreon um but it is all safe for work are you going to post an sfw content on reddit or are you more comfortable with wholesome content um i don't plan on making an sfw content at the moment at the moment well i don't have any plans for doing it um it's something i mentioned when i first got into recording partially because i almost felt like i had to like by being part of this community where there's such a big overlap between safe for work and not safe for work content i i wasn't sure you know no one pressured me to do it but i kind of pressured myself like if i'm part of this community i should make not safe for work content and um just over the months thinking it's not really something i'm comfortable doing and not something i really want to do so i don't think i will be making not safe for work content um and also how was your first m for m audio nsfw 18 plus i haven't made one so um yeah that doesn't exist uh, so these groups of questions are more just video suggestions so we have um suggestions for a late night call we have um well let me just say this so i have a really big google doc sheet where every time i get a suggestion in my suggestion box i get one on well i guess curious cat doesn't exist anymore so i guess telling him um or i get suggestions in my comments i copy and paste them directly over there um and i also write down ideas i have so it's just this big list and if I don't have something on my mind that I specifically want to record, I go back and I look through that list. So I have moved all of these suggestions um, into the list, but I'll still address them. Um, late night call. Yes, that's on the list. I think it's cute. Would a safer work after hair audio be in the works one day? I don't think so. Um, partially because I think that safer work aftercare is um, it's an interesting phrase. <laughs> Um, because it still implies something not safe for work most of the time, and I'm not sure how comfortable I am doing that, especially since I mainly post on YouTube, and I don't want any kind of, um, potentially inappropriate content up here, because it's, it's so open, YouTube is so open, um, so there's people of all ages everywhere, so I don't think that'll happen. Um, can you do dysphoria comfort audio? Um, and down here, there's another one about dysphoria comfort. So th this is difficult. It's not that I don't want to make a dysphoria comfort. It's that it's incredibly hard to do, and I don't want to do it wrong. Um, I know a few other creators who have done it. Um, partially, I think that being trans makes it a lot harder to do this because I know just how delicate topics can be, and I know that some things that will make some people feel better will make other people feel awful. <laughs> and having experienced that myself, I, I'm, I don't know how to do this correctly unless I make like 20 different Dysphoria Comfort audios. Um, there, there's other creators who have done it, and they're pretty good. It, you know, I've, I've listened to a few of them. Some of them are wonderful. Some of them do make me a little uncomfortable. And it's not, not the creator's fault at all. It's not that they've said something wrong. It's just how delicate the, the situation is. So personally, if I listen to an audio for dysphoria or an audio where the, um, the listener is supposed to be a trans man and they have all these words about like, oh, you're such a real boy. Oh, you're <laughs> like, you're my I don't, cute little boy or whatever. You're so valid. I hate it. I hate it. I don't like it. And that's just my preference and other people want it. But that just proves that I could make an audio like this and it could definitely make some people very uncomfortable, even if it made some people feel better. Um, so it's just a really complicated topic. Would you ever do like everyday life activity videos like grocery shopping or online shopping? I could. Um, something about me is that I know nothing about editing audio. Um, so anything that requires like a bunch of sound effects or anything like that, I don't really know how to do it. I need to get better before I feel like I can do those properly. Um, also, I'm not quite sure what a grocery shopping audio would be. <laughs> would be just <laughs> just be like hey baby can we go to the um can we go to the dish soap aisle 
Um, but I get it. It's like domestic. I've seen online shopping ones where you're like doing it from home and it's pretty cute. So I did put this on the list, but I just think it's kind of funny. Um, could you maybe do an audio about someone that's feminine, but feels like they won't be seen as a boy because of it? That kind of goes into the dysphoria thing and like the gender validation, which like I said before, is really touchy. Um, so maybe that's my answer. Can you do a longer video, like an hour perhaps, of sleeping noises, heartbeat, breathing? I don't know how to describe it. Um, I have done longer videos. I don't... Yeah, I do have a um, a sleep aid that's like an hour and 20 minutes, <laughs> if you're interested in that. It is very quiet. There's hardly any noise. Um, I definitely want to try again and somehow have my mic pick up more breathing and like shuffling sounds, but um, yeah. All right. This is an interesting slide. I don't know where to group these in. So I had a couple people asking what my ethnicity is. Um, and there was a a community post I made where I signed it off with hasta luego. And people kept asking if I was from a Spanish-speaking country. So um, I will address this. I am just uh, white. I'm... <laughs> okay, I made this PowerPoint a really long time ago. So forgot some of the things that are in it. But yes, I'm a very unpatriotic white American. Um, I don't really know anything about my heritage. I'm just white. Like, I've got some Dutch. I've got some some English, probably. Um, but, yep, I'm a white American. I'm not from a place that speaks Spanish, but I did study the language for seven years. And um, one of my jobs is primarily in Spanish. I'd say, like, 60-40, speaking Spanish to English. That doesn't mean I'm good at it. That means I can talk about my job <laughs> very well in limited context. Um, anyways. Oh my, <laughs> so I got a lot of questions about plants, a lot of them, um, and if I'm remembering this correctly, I kind of summarized a lot of the questions that are asked in later slides, but um, let me see if there's anything that I didn't address later. What is your favorite type of cactus? I don't think I addressed that. Um, oh. My favorite type of cactus, I don't know if you mean a cactus specifically, or if you mean like a succulent. Um, I really love the Graptopetalum paraguayans, which I'm probably pronouncing really wrong. Um, that's a really beautiful succulent that I, I had at one time. Um, as far as a cactus goes, I love the barrel cactus. They're, they're just ridiculous. I like that they're big. <laughs> I like that they're round. Um, any plants you have a particular vendetta against? A vendetta. Um, hmm. I guess in, like, a practical sense, I have a vendetta against, um, phragmites, which they're not a plant you grow off, and they're just a plant that kind of ruins the ecosystem around where I am. Um, so I've done, I've done work with some groups around here, and I've done like science fair projects back in middle school about how to efficiently kill them so maybe i have a vendetta against them um i think i answered this in the later slides do you have any vital tips for looking after plants okay i have a confession and it's that i'm not really the type of plant parent who measures everything out perfectly i don't like fertilize a certain amount of times a week or water a certain amount of times a week or whatever i really just try to feel them if that makes sense I mean, there's signs that every plant will show that tells you what it needs. And if you can kind of learn those, then I feel like that's more efficient than trying to keep like a routine schedule that may not be perfect for all your plants. Anyways, um, so my vital tips are to learn the plants that you're taking care of. And whether that means just like seeing what happens if you go one more day without water, does it get a little limp does it get a little soggy okay well then that tells you what you need to change in terms of watering and just doing research about like what colors they can turn with certain vitamin deficiencies and um, what certain diseases look like on these plants and what diseases they could get all sorts of stuff like that it's mainly being well researched in my opinion and knowing the plants not so much about like i measure out in tablespoons the amount of water i give my plant so that's just how i do it um here's a second page of plant questions would you ever would you ever have an instagram for your plants um i'm really bad at social media i don't post ever on anything besides like twitter and that's because it's a va account um so 
I have tried having a plant Instagram in the past, and I posted maybe once and then gave up, so I don't know about that. Um, do your plants have names? I do address that later, and I address that in this question later. Why? Okay. <laughs> Here, here's some answers to the questions. I currently have 25 indoor plants. Um, I'm not really an outdoor plant person, which means that I live in a small apartment and I don't have a farm where I can, you know, farm my own plants. I do have this little plot of land and I'll plant like vegetables. I plant a lot of tomatoes, some squashes, stuff like that, but I mainly focus on my indoor plants. Um, <laughs> I got a lot of questions about my top five plants or flowers, so here's just some I really like. So right here we have the Monstera Deliciosa. Um, I have one of these in my house and she's the love of my life. We have sunflowers, we have um, daylilies, which aren't actually lilies, fun fact. Um, we have some wisteria, and then finally we have these stargazer lilies. Um, I'm pretty sure they're also a the Asiatic lilies. Um, but yeah, these are some of my favorite plants. Um, I Oh, so for plants I wish I had, I wish I had carnivorous plants. I wish I knew how to take care of them. Um, I had a sundew at one point, and I thought it was the coolest plant in the world, but I did not understand it, and it died within a few months. Um, they're pretty crazy because they can't have any nutrients. Like, some of the pots that most plants, like terracotta pots, have too many nutrients for these plants, and they'll just die if you plant them in a terracotta pot. You have to water some of them with, like, distilled water with no nutrients in them. They're a lot of work, but they seem really cool, and eventually I would love to get into taking care of them. Um... I don't really have any specific plants I hate. There's some that I have difficulties with. Um, and I had a couple questions asking for plants I recommend for beginners, and my recommendation will always be the Golden Pothos. Um, it is very low maintenance. It looks beautiful. I mean, um, they can trail, you know, I've seen people hang them over bookshelves, and you can hang them on your walls when they get long enough, and they're just gorgeous, gorgeous plants. Some of them have these cool little variations. Some of them are lighter, darker colors. I just love this plant, and it's really, really easy. Um, you know, some people say that plants are impossible to kill. Like Some people say that the golden pothos is impossible to kill, which isn't true. You definitely could kill it, um, but it is difficult. It's a very resilient plant. Looks beautiful, kind of low light, excellent for indoors. Highly recommend it for beginners. Um, and I talked about some of the plant tips I had. So a couple questions asked what what started my love for plants. And in all honesty, it was this one parsley plant. Um, I think it was way back in middle school. I was probably like uh, 12, maybe 11 or 12. And everybody had finished their science fair projects. And one of my classmates did a project where they... Um, grew a ton of plants and I completely forget why but they gave them all out afterwards so I got this little parsley plant that was in a milk carton and I treated this thing like a baby it got huge I had this massive bush sized parsley plant I never used it for cooking or anything like that I just like looking at it um and I love taking care of it um I ended up going on vacation for a week and left it with my parents and it did not get taken care of and that was the end of my parsley plant but I think that that plant is what really began my obsession. Um, so the question earlier asking if, oh, if my plants have names. A lot of my indoor ones have names. I can't ever remember them. So there's, they're written on popsicle sticks in them. Um, here's some of my names. Like we have Angel, which is my Monster Deliciosa. We have Senor Fernando, who is just a fern. I don't know what he is. Here's my two golden pothoses, Reno and Ward. We have Olivia, Malvolio, Josie, Del Taco, um, which is an avocado tree that passed away. And then Kronos, which was another avocado tree that died of the same disease. Um, we have Howard, who was named by a close friend of mine. It was this random squash that appeared in my garden, and it absolutely destroyed the entire garden. I don't know what it was, maybe a pumpkin. It made these really weird gourds, but <laughs> there's some of the names. Um, okay, next set of questions are about music. So, um, favorite songs. I ended up just listing some of the artists that I really like down here. You can read through them. Um, <laughs> like it says down here, I was a musical theater kid. I grew up around a ton of musicals, and I did theater for a long time. I was heavily involved. Um, but I don't really think people are looking for musical recommendations, so I didn't include those, but, um, anyways. Uh, do you listen to Among Us in real life? <laughs> no. 
Um, let me see. What's a song you'd want every single person to listen to at least once? That is a really, a really hard question because I don't know what one song like, like, contains everything that I'd want people to know about what I love about music or just like really good lyrics. Um, the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, The Man of La Mancha, which is a musical that I grew up with. I love it more than anything. Um, it's pretty old. Not a lot of people I know know it, but in um oh, i don't know what this version is called i know it's the version that's in spanish um it has an overture that's different than the broadway recording and it's one of the most beautiful overtures i've ever heard i love it more than anything so i guess that would be the song i want everybody to listen to um so yeah movies okay i got a lot of questions about movies and shows and I don't really watch movies or shows much. Um, I didn't grow up with a TV. I've never had a TV. I, you know, the only reason I have like um, a Netflix subscription is because I steal my roommates. Um, so I don't, I don't really watch, watch any movies. Um, my favorite movie is Groundhog Day, though. That's one that I have seen, and I've seen it a lot. So, let me see. Do I have a favorite Disney movie? I have seen a lot of the Disney movies, so... As far as a favorite goes, I mean, Everybody Loves Encanto is fantastic. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Moana. My mom's a big fan of Moana. Um, and I think I just like it because she likes it a lot. And it's, it's cute to see your parents excited about things. So, there we go. Animals. Okay. A lot of questions on animals so i did summarize these so i'm just going to skip ahead to my summarization slides so my favorite animal is the giant anteater um i also love like leaf sheep which are these little sea slugs that can photosynthesize they're super cool um but if i had to pick one i would go with the anteater they're just <laughs> they look ridiculous and i love them um, I love their super long noses. There's a video of one using its tail as a blanket. I thought that was the cutest thing in the world. Um, there was a time when I had such an obsession with these animals that I had like a folder on my phone that was nothing but pictures of them. Um, I love their little babies right on their backs. They actually don't have any way to pick up their babies. Their claws are so long they have to walk on their knuckles. So they walk on their knuckles and obviously their mouth here has no way of picking up the baby anteater so they just ride on their backs for like the first two years of their life um and that is an amazing fact uh just contributes to the reason i love them um thoughts on frogs and do you like frogs yeah sure frogs are cool uh, my favorite frogs are like the big dumpy ones i like the big fat frogs that look like puddles when they're not moving uh do i like cats i do like cats mainly the big lazy ones i like maine coons i like the cats that are essentially the size of dogs um <laughs> I had these two questions. What is your favorite type of bird? This is very important. And again, this is very important. What is your favorite species of bird and why? So I included two birds. Um, first, we have this dark blue macaw, which I've always just think they're I always have thought. They're gorgeous. I just love the colors. It's purely an aesthetic thing. And then I have flamingos. I don't really know why the flamingo. I was obsessed with flamingos as a kid. I had like flamingo playing cards anytime anybody like visited florida or visited somewhere that had flamingos they always had to bring me back like a flamingo stuffed animal or a f flamingo something so i included them um this one's a very white flamingo but i he looks funny his nose looks like gonzo's nose um do i have pets i do have pets kind of um he doesn't live with me because uh, i can't have pets in my apartment but this is my dog zephyr he is <laughs> He's getting to be an old man, but I don't like to admit that. Um, he's an Australian Shepherd. Uh, he's a bit of a jerk sometimes, as it says on the screen. And he's one of my best friends, so. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot I labeled this slide just trans. So these are a bunch of questions I have about being trans. Um, so let me see. What advice do you have for dating while trans? My main piece of advice is absolutely knowing your worth. I, I know it's so easy to go, like, you know, if you're in a relationship and someone says something that's a bit of a red flag, it's super easy to be like, well, 
but they seem to like me otherwise, or, you know, I don't think anybody else will date me right now, so I'm gonna stay here, and I, I absolutely feel for people who do that, and feel like they have to do that, but I also think it's incredibly depressing when people have to do that, so don't look at it as, like, a negative thing, um, I know when I was younger, I had, like, a checklist in my mind, and it was a checklist of reasons why people wouldn't like me, you know, um, like, being trans was on my checklist, and, you know, you know like, my, my weight was on my checklist, and it was just, I, I don't know why I had it, it was just a way to make myself feel bad about myself, it was almost a way to justify why I felt like people didn't like me or get along with me because of my checklist, um, and I know that I cannot be the only person who thinks that, like, maybe I'll find a boyfriend one day, as long as he doesn't mind that I'm trans, or as long as he doesn't hate trans people. So my biggest advice for dating while trans is to know your worth and to know that you don't deserve that and that you wouldn't want to be with a person who treats who treats you badly because you are trans. Even if it's just a little bad, even if it's just a little sketchy, you know, you, you don't deserve that. Um, can you see trans rights? Hell yeah, trans rights. Um, hey, firstly, how was your day? Uh, I love your videos. They're so comforting. Thank you very much. But I really wanted to know, how did you come to terms with being trans and what made you want to start your channel? So I answered that question, the second question, before. So how did you come to terms with being trans? Um, uh, it was a long process. You know, I identified the way I did before I knew what the word trans meant. And um, that made it interesting because it was just, you know, learning little bits of things about myself and eventually learning the word trans and learning there were other trans people and being like, oh shit, <laughs> this is an experience other people have had. Um, for me, you know, I've always lived my life just making tiny changes that make me more comfortable. Um, you know, so when I, I didn't originally just come out as trans, I didn't wake up one day and go, I want to be a guy now, I'm going to be trans, and then change everything. It was more like, you know, I was slightly uncomfortable with the way people treated me when I dressed a certain way, so I slowly started the way I, uh, to change the way I dressed. I, you know, my hair made me insecure, so I changed the way my hair looked. Um, at some point, you know, like my name made me not feel comfortable anymore, and the pronouns people called me made me not feel comfortable anymore, so I... I changed them just to try to find things that made me feel more comfortable. And all of those tiny changes I've made have created what I am now. I'm an amalgamation of all these little changes, all these little decisions I've made throughout my entire life. Um, so in terms of coming to terms with being trans, I, it, was, it was almost backwards. It's not like I discovered I was trans and then was like, oh my god, I have to change all these things. It was more like I changed things and then realized that that being trans is an experience that I can identify with. So, there's my answer. Um, how long have you been on T? Uh, oh my goodness. I have to think. Um, almost two years, maybe short of two years, I think. Let me see. Any advice for gay trans boys in the closet trying to find love? Um, I'm going to say the same advice for dating while trans, like the person asked for earlier. Know your worth. Find people who support you. Find a group that will support you. Um, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I don't quite know how to answer this, obviously. <laughs> um, I still haven't figured it out myself, but that's the best advice I can give. When did you find out you're trans? How did you tell your family? Um... In terms of when did I find out I was trans, I found out, I'm going to say I started experiencing those little changes I was talking about and, and changing things when I was like 13, 12 or 13. Um, but in terms of discovering the actual word trans and identifying that way, that took a couple more years. How did you tell your family? Um, I'm not quite comfortable giving the entire story, but I did it via, I did it to my mom via a letter, um, that I left on her pillowcase and then hid in my room. So, how do you deal with gender dysphoria and also what was your experience when first starting testosterone? 
Um, how do you deal with gender dysphoria is quite the question because I feel like every day is just trying to figure out ways to deal with it. Um, obviously, finding a support group helped a lot. I think that's actually what helped the most. You need to find people who support you um, in any step of your transition you're in. You need to find people who you know you can go to. You need to not feel alone. And that made it a lot easier to to navigate it because even on days I did feel really dysphoric or on, even on days where I, I was frustrated that I couldn't look the way that I thought I should. Um, there were always people who who cared about me and didn't let that change anything. Um, so that's the main main way I, I dealt with it outside of like binding and eventually starting testosterone. Um, what was your experience with first starting testosterone? Um, it's definitely a thing where you don't notice how many things have changed until months later. Like, you don't notice things changing very slowly. That's why a lot of people keep video logs of their voices or the way they look and stuff like that. I never did that, but I can look back on pictures and I can look back on videos from um, years ago. And, you know, it's, it's a nice feeling to see that things have changed in the ways that I hope they would. Um, yeah. Also, I love your audios and they never fail to make me feel valid. Well, that is fantastic. Thank you. Where do you find your clothes slash what brands do you usually wear as a plus size trans guy? I'm also a plus size trans guy and need clothes that aren't just t-shirts. Um, this is quite the process and I have not figured it out. <laughs> uh, like I was talking about before, finding, you know, making small changes, finding little things that make me feel more confident. That's kind of how I built my wardrobe. Um, I never did like a complete wardrobe haul and found things that I was comfortable with. It was very... This shirt still makes me feel good, so I'll keep it. This shirt does not make me feel good, so I'll throw it away. Um, you know, there there was one time when I, I purged my entire closet of things that I just didn't feel confident in. It was anything, any clothes that sparked negative emotions in me were thrown out. Um, I have a very bad clothing choices, though. I mean, when I first came out, it was very... Um, I went to Old Navy... I bought everything in the men's clearance section, and <laughs> it was awful. It was awful. You need to find clothes that fit you, and there's a difference between going into the men's section and going, this is technically my size, and wearing it, and finding clothes that fit you. Like, I know personally I'm very short, and um, if I go into the men's men's section, they assume that the wider your pants are, the taller you are, which is absolutely not my case, so everything is looked baggy, Everything is looked, it, it makes you look like a child, you know, <laughs> when none of your clothes fit you right, all that kind of stuff. Um, so in terms of, like, what brands I usually wear, um, as far as pants, I've found that um, Target's, like, Goody Fellow, I think that's what it's called, have a really good pants for my body type specifically. Um, they don't have, like, as baggy of a crotch as I find in a lot of men's pants, um, which is good for me because obviously I'm short and the crotch is always way too low. Um, so I go to Target for my pants mostly, but otherwise I thrift most of my clothes. So I can't really tell you um, brands or where I bought them and how expensive they were. Um, you know, so I guess my advice is to focus less on the labels of clothes and more how they make you feel. You know, I have some clothes that are still women's clothes, but I feel like I wear them and I'm confident in them and they fit me well and I don't feel dysphoric in them, so it works. One of the biggest mistakes I found or, or I had during my fashion experience was purely getting clothes based on the label um, or like only buying clothes in the men's section or buying boring clothes. Men's clothes are boring. I will never stop talking about that. They're incredibly boring um, and not flattering to many body types except for the main body type you see in men's advertisements, you know, broad shoulders, um, pretty muscular, thin guy. Um, so, yeah, there's my little rant on that. <laughs> All right, here's an entire, an entire slide of people asking if I'm single, if I will date them, um, do I have a significant other, all that kind of stuff. So, are you single? I am. Do you have a significant other? No. Um, can we go out? When are you going to marry me? Not going to do that. Um, oh, oops, okay. 
uh, Sonny, if you have a partner, are you going to stop your channel or are you still doing it? Um, ultimately depends on where I am in life, who my partner is, and their comfort level for what I'm doing. It's definitely, um, you know, not, not a decision I can make before any of that happens. I have been in a relationship while making these audios, and I never stopped making them. So, um, hopefully that means good things for the future. Uh, let me see. Just wondering if you have a boyfriend, not in a weird way, lol, just because your videos feel so authentic, it's hard to imagine otherwise. Sorry if this is weird to ask, by the way. Um, it's not weird to ask. Like I said, I'm not dating anybody right now. As far as my videos feeling authentic, um, I, I honestly use my videos as a way to express my hopeless romanticism, um, without actually having someone to give that attention to. So maybe it feels authentic just because I have a lot of it built up and I have a lot of things I want to do and want to say and things I wish were said to me and stuff like that. Um, that I include into my content, but I'm glad it feels authentic. Uh, OMG, hi, I love your videos, and I hope this isn't too personal, but are you actively looking for a relationship or are in the dating scene? You see, <laughs> you seem like such a chad not to be out there. Anyways, keep up the good work. Um, I don't know if I should be insulted <laughs> um, since I was called a chad, um, but I am not really actively looking. I have some big things coming up in my life um, that I think would make a relationship difficult unless we were both really, really dedicated. And it's kind of hard to find people with that level of dedication right now. So uh, that is my answer. Have you ever had a boyfriend or do you have one now or do you even have a crush? If so, tell us about him. I have had boyfriends. I don't have one now and I don't have a crush. Um, I have this little note about parasocial relationships, partly to remind myself that I'm not allowed to rant about parasocial relationships, um, but it's just, you know, there's a lot of people who ask, like, will you go out with me, or I, oh, I think that we'd be perfect together, people who come into, um, like, my Twitter DMs, or uh, message me talking about, like, hey, uh, this might be uncomfortable for you, but... Um, I've listened to your content and I think that we would be really good together or I think that we would get along perfectly together. And first of all, if you have to start uh, um, something with this might make you uncomfortable or I hope this doesn't make you uncomfortable, maybe rethink it because it definitely makes me uncomfortable. Um, something I try to be pretty transparent about is the fact that obviously Sonny is a character. He's not me. I'm not him he's an outlet for my hopeless romanticism. Obviously, I'm not going to make audios about the bad things that happen in my life. I'm not going to make audios that show the bad sides of me because I, I don't write them out. I'm, I'm not hyper aware of all the bad sides of me, you know, and I don't think anybody is. So when you listen to my content, you're not getting me as a person, you're getting a character I've created. Um, so it's always interesting and a bit uncomfortable when people, you know, even joke about like, you know, oh, I think I know you from your content. Uh, we should go out because mm, it's it's not true. And also idolizing, um, idolizing creators, idolizing VAs, especially ones who make romantic content, can be dangerous for listeners as well. Because you have this perfect idea of someone when you don't really know them, um, and that you know can cause issues. Uh, okay, so here's questions that aren't really questions. Um, not really a question, but you remind me of Leaf from Animal Crossing. I love Leaf from Animal Crossing. I wish I could be him, so thank you. Um, I just, I just wanted to know how do you make so many people feel loved and wanted and thank you for it. It's not a question I can really answer. It's more a compliment disguised as a question, but thank you very much. Um, I'm glad I can make people feel that way. Just wanted to say thank you. My English ain't the best, but hearing you soothes me uh, and help me to sleep on restless nights. I'm even starting to think about doing videos in Spanish. XOXO from Uruguay. That would be fantastic. Um, I haven't looked too much, but I haven't seen much content in Spanish. Um, I've looked a bit, but that would be really cool. I, I definitely welcome anybody to try this. If it seems like something that'd be fun, then go for it. And it is fun. Um, <laughs> but thank you very much. I appreciate that. And good luck with your content journey if you do decide to try. Um, thank you so much for your work. Your audios are extremely comforting and really make us feel loved and understood. Take care of yourself. I appreciate it.
so thank you and i will try to take care of myself okay now we get to the ones that i didn't really sort um it's just a bunch of questions so i'm gonna try to go quickly because i'm already taking up a lot of time so what is your sexuality if you don't mind sharing and i love you i'm a gay man do you believe in fate or an otherwise godly power i don't oh lord okay who is your favorite character from any media and why um james from pokemon <laughs> what is your what is something you've never done before but really want to do one day i want to leave the country i've never left the country what's your favorite sound um my favorite sound um i like the sound of my front door unlocking when i go home it just makes me because i know i'm gonna like go sit in my bed and be relaxed that makes me feel good what's your favorite memory that is a hard question to answer i don't um have any favorite memories right now i guess talking about that parsley plant earlier made me pretty happy so at the moment that's my favorite memory um what is something you could talk about for hours and not get bored of okay i put this note down here to future sonny you're not allowed to rant about intersectionality um because i could definitely talk or rant about intersectionality in the lgbt community for a very long time and i have before um what is something you think more people should know or be aware of the same exact thing intersectionality in the lgbt community um not going to do the rant here because i'm telling myself i have told myself that i'm not allowed to do it but um something you should look up if you're interested have you ever considered doing more fantasy sci-fi type of asmr like android listener asmr I like this a lot they're very gender <laughs> um i've thought about it every creator has their strengths and my strength is not fantasy content um i can sometimes write scripts or domestic content i improv everything but fantasy sci-fi stuff is incredibly hard to improv um and i I feel like I'm almost not creative enough to do them. I don't have these big fantasy sci-fi ideas in my head. Um, I thought about doing them. Maybe in the future I'll give it a shot, but it's just really not something I feel I feel confident in doing. Um, have you heard of Hunter x Hunter? Have you watched it? It's my favorite anime, so I'm kind of curious if you know it. I have heard of it. I haven't watched it. Uh, I love your videos a lot. They make me very happy and help me to sleep and call myself have an amazing day or night. Thank you, and I hope you do too. What's your favorite game on the Switch? Okay, I don't have many games on the Switch. Right now I'm playing Pokemon Arceus Legends, and I love it. Um, but it's kind of hard for me to focus in long games. I play a lot of Project Diva. <laughs> Probably Project Diva. I also have, like, Taiko no Tatsujin, and I have... Um, what else do I have? I have Astroneer. I love Astroneer, too. But my favorite... Oh, I have Animal Crossing. But I'm going to say my favorite overall is probably Project Diva. It's perfect for my tiny attention span. Um, I can play for an hour or I can play for just two minutes if I want to hear the funky little little vocaloids say. Um, hello, just wanted to say your voice is so sweet. Have you done any training for your voice before starting YouTube or just went for it? I have never done any training for my voice, so I guess I just went for it. Uh, hello, Sonny, I have two questions. Would you ever be open to doing scripts from subscribers slash fans? Um, I definitely would. Uh, I think it seems like a really fun idea to have people submit scripts. The only issue is that I absolutely want people to be compensated for what they do, and I want to make sure people are properly credited. I wouldn't feel okay just taking people's scripts because they give them to me and then creating content with them. It's it's like I'm not, not taking advantage of them because they made the decision to write the scripts and send it to me, but I'd need to think of a good way where I feel like I'm doing it I'm doing their content justice, and I feel like I'm doing the person justice. Um, also, I don't use a lot of scripts. I have maybe three videos that are scripted. Everything else is completely improvised. So I'm open to doing scripts, but it's a little bit harder for me to feel natural while doing them. Um, and also, where did you buy those ears? They're super cute. I'm assuming by ears you're talking about these ones, which were part of my Halloween costume. I was a little sheep. Um, and I didn't buy them. I made them. I went to Michael's, and I got hot glue gun, some EVA foam, uh, went to Joann's and got like two or three kinds of fabric. This pink in the middle is literally just sidewalk chalk. Um, and these, this little earring is a jump ring, which you can get a, a pack at Michael's for pretty cheap. Um, so I made them. Would you ever be interested in one, collabing with a scriptwriter, and or two, narrating for audiobooks? Your content is so wholesome and cute. Thank you. I love making wholesome content. Um, I would absolutely be interested in collabing with a scriptwriter. Um... I just uh, don't really know. <laughs> don't really know how to get there. I kind of do everything on my own. 
um, I have a really hard time talking to people, uh, which might not come across in my content because, you know, obviously I'm confident while recording my content because I know I can change, I can edit, I can undo, I can, you know, um, I can not post whatever I want, but actually talking to people and forming like friendships and relationships with people is incredibly difficult. I can't do it. It's really hard for me to reach out to people. So I would love to collab with like even VAs and other script writers, but um, I'm just not quite there yet. Uh, and narrating for audiobooks sounds extraordinary. I would love to narrate for audiobooks. Once again, I have no idea how to get into it, uh, but I would love to. Do you accept commissions, and if so, where can we submit them, and have you considered doing paid commissions, and what are your reasons for your decision? Um, at this exact moment, I don't accept commissions. I'm thinking about opening them, but that requires like a lot of thought on my behalf. I have to think about exactly how I would charge for them, what I'm charging for, what my schedule would look like. I need to type up papers, um, stuff like that. So I'm, I'm working on it. I'm thinking about doing it. And pretty soon, I think I'm going to open maybe like two or three slots and just see how the commission process goes and move from there. Um, what are the reasons for your decision? I like the, f the freedom of you know, I'm, I'm pretty lenient with myself as far as making content goes. I try to get something out once a week, um, and everything's one week ahead on my Patreon, so I almost have, like, a week of buffer time in case something goes wrong. I already have something recorded, and I like that. Once you add the pressure of, like, someone is paying me to do this, there's a specific person who is waiting for this specific content, it gets a lot more difficult, and you don't have that same freedom. Um, so I definitely need to work on my schedule in order to have time to do them. Right now, I record all of my content in a public library. <laughs> and obviously I have to, I have to drive, you know, 35, 40 minutes in order to get there. It's hard for me to go multiple times a week. Um, so I would have to, I would have to have more time in my schedule to record in order to do commissions because the, the one recording session I have a week wouldn't be sufficient. Any place you would like to visit? Anywhere that's not in the U.S. I have been stuck here my whole life. Get me out. Um, what is your favorite type of furniture and why? I wrote this down because I didn't think I'd remember it. Those really intricate fish tanks I will never be able to afford. Like the fish tanks that are somehow in a staircase or the ones that are like on a curved wall. They just put fish tanks everywhere. I like the tables that are half fish tank. I think they look awesome. I don't know anything about how ethical it is for the fish. Um, I haven't really done that kind of research. I just think they look cool. I love your laughter and giggling in your content. How do you manage to bring it out so naturally and genuine? Um, that is because all my content is improvised. I don't ever write, you know, laughing into a script or something, mainly because I don't use scripts. So um, it's in my content because it is genuine and it is natural. It's, I mean, I, I really put myself into the scenarios that I'm acting out. Um... And if I laugh, I laugh, so. Will you visit the little-known beach in a future audio again? It's my favorite one from you. I love the setting, the sneaky atmosphere, and the intimacy. Um, so this is one of the first audios I ever created. It was, like, me and the listener out on this tiny little beach, which was actually recorded on a beach. Like I said, I don't know anything about sound effects, so when I recorded that, it was me taking my phone out, opening voice memos, and just, like, talking on this tiny little beach. Um, I'm definitely open to do it again, but the thing is that now I record with a microphone. <laughs> I don't record with voice memos, and um, firstly, I'm hoping it sounds better, but secondly, that makes my, my portability a bit different. Um, so I wouldn't be able to set up my microphone out on the beach. Maybe I could if I really, if I brought like a table out there and all that kind of stuff, but um, it could be difficult, so maybe, but I feel like if I were to do another beach audio, it would mainly have to be, like, sound effects that I edit in. Um, how is life treating you recently? It's okay, I'm here. What is the most memorable experience you've had in the past month or so? Um, hmm, I've been mainly sticking to a routine for the past month, um, but I did try out this new little coffee shop. And I'd say that's the most memorable experience. It was really cute. It was very liberal, um, very mutual aid and all that kind of stuff. I loved it. So if you could make any small animal as large as a cow, what animal would you choose and why? 
as large as a cow. What makes an animal small? Because I kind of want to see, like, like a hamster. I want to see a hamster as large as a cow. Um, but I also want to pick something really tiny. So I would love to see... Oh, what is a really tiny animal that I like? I would love to see, like, a slug. Like a periwinkle. I want to see a periwinkle that's as big as a cow. I think it'd be crazy. What's your funniest today I learned moment you can remember? Um, my funniest today I learned moment. I've had a lot of today I learned moments. I was very sheltered as a kid. I, I learned some things way too late. Um, I cannot think of one right now, but I will come back to it if I think of something. Um, when was the last time you learned something that you couldn't believe you didn't know before? Okay, that's kind of the same. So I'll come back to it if I think of something. Do you struggle with anxiety? And if so, what helps? Um, I, I'm not diagnosed with anxiety. I have anxiety as a part of a long, as a, of a, wow, I have anxiety as a part of a larger mental disorder that I struggle with. Um, and I don't quite know what to say because it's definitely something I still struggle with really heavily. Um, so my answer to this is going to be therapy. I love therapy <laughs> and I love my therapist. Um, he, him, by the way, hi, I'm a student who struggles massively with lack of motivation and is a professional procrastinator. Do you have any tips on how not to be burnt out? Thanks, and I love you so much. Um, wow, okay, so I have a lot of these same issues. Lack of motivation, professional procrastinator. I know at least with audios, doing, having that one week ahead schedule um, helps me a lot because it takes away some of the stress and, I, you know, I definitely believe that your brain is kind of like a coloring sheet and certain areas can be colored in at certain times, you know, um, but big emotions and strong emotions can take up the whole brain and then all of a sudden you can't think of anything else. And the stress of getting things done on time and the stress of like cranking out good ideas definitely takes up my whole brain and it makes it very difficult um, to make content sometimes. But having everything done a week before, at least I know like... If I can't record today, if I can't think of something good enough, the world won't end. It'll be okay. And I kind of did that with schoolwork, too. Like, they were definitely the things I finished at 11.59 that were due at midnight. I still do that. Um, but for bigger things, really trying to work on them, it, it's hard to say that the answer to procrastination is to get it done early, right? But even if it's just thinking about it for like 10 minutes a day and writing down some basic ideas, it removes some of the stress. So that's what I do, and that helps me not to be burnt out. Um, your videos have been such a massive help getting me to sleep and helping me through my depression. If uh, Is this your full-time job? If not, do you want it to be? Um, I guess it's my full-time job in the in the way that I'm not working anywhere else right now. But that's not because, like, I'm fully sufficient on YouTube and Patreon and stuff like that. It's not because I shouldn't be working. It's just that I can't right now. Um, do I want it to be my full-time job? I think it would be really cool if it could be, if I could dedicate more time to it and not be stressed constantly about other things I am doing. Um, but, you know, maybe. What can I get you to do to make a Discord server? Um, you can do all you want, and I don't think I'll do it. <laughs> Not not to be rude, I just don't want to make a Discord server. First of all, I don't understand Discord, so I wouldn't be able to control things as much as I feel like um, I would need to in order to feel comfortable doing it. Um, I would have to find people to help moderate the server, all that kind of stuff. And the same with scriptwriters earlier, I'd want them to be fairly compensated for doing work for me and to not feel like they're being exploited. Um, and I don't have the you know, I don't have the people right now. I don't have the desire to make a server. I don't understand it. Probably not. If you want to interact with me, um, I have my Twitter, and that's that's pretty much what I do. Tea or coffee? Definitely tea, but I am kind of getting into drinking coffee recently. What is your favorite coffee or tea drink to order from coffee shops? Mm, I, I normally order tea. I love very spiced teas. Like, not hot spice, obviously, but kind of intense flavors and I normally drink them with a lot of milk um so like Bengal spice is one of my favorite like masala chai I drink a lot of that stuff like that oh but at coffee shops it is very hard to find good Bengal spice or masala chai so good luck do you like desserts I love desserts I have a massive sweet tooth um hey Sonny thanks for your content really appreciate it 
I'd like to know what's the first thing that comes in your head when I tell you France. I'm French. Um, first of all, thank you, and uh, I hate that this is the first thing that comes to my head, but it's definitely bread. I love bread, and I think that um, I think of like the fancy French loaves I find at the grocery store that are amazing. So, if you could travel to any time period, where would you go and why? Um, I definitely wouldn't travel to the past. I know that's normally the way it's thought of when people answer uh, when people answer these questions. Um, but in mm, we're not that progressive nowadays. We definitely weren't this progressive in the past, and I don't think I'd feel safe going into the past, so sometime in the future. Do you have any book recommendations or any books you want to talk about? It doesn't have to be MLM or NBLM. NBLM. Um, I don't have a lot of MLM or NBLM book recommendations, so I put these two books, which are my two favorite books, two favorite books. They're both Victorian flower language dictionaries, which if you're into it, I think you'll love these books. If you're not into it or don't know what I'm talking about, you might be iffy. Um, it's pretty much a lot of the symbolism behind each different species of flower. Um, Flowerpedia by Sherilyn Darcy is almost like a dictionary. Like, it's very much just flower meaning, flower meaning. It's it's amazing. It has thousands of plants in it. Um, it also has, like, the, the symbolism between behind different numbers of flowers and like different countries flowers and different meanings depending on the country i love this book very much and then there's also floriography by jessica rue um and this one is definitely not as extensive it doesn't have as many plants but it's fully illustrated and it's absolutely gorgeous um i would highly recommend checking both of those out if we went on a date what stuffed toy animal would you want so um what stuffed toy animal would i want Mmm, anteater. I've never seen a good anteater stuffed animal. Hey, Sonny, how are you? So here's my question. Do you enjoy doing these audios? If yes or no, why? <laughs> yes, I enjoy doing them. If I didn't enjoy doing them, I'd hope I wouldn't keep doing them. Um, this one is a cheesy question. What kind of music do you listen to? Any favorite singer or band? Uh, so I kind of answered that earlier, so I won't do it again. And my last question is, if you had a chance to talk to a spirit, do you want it? Do you want to interact to it? And what question might you ask to it? Uh, if I get to talk to spirits, I'll probably say no because I'm afraid they will ghost me. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, have a nice day, sun boy. <laughs> All right, sun boy. I can deal with that. Um, would I talk to a spirit? I don't think I should talk to a spirit. Like, I probably would because I'm, like, I couldn't stop myself, but I'm telling myself I shouldn't talk to a spirit. What's your favorite comfort item or thing? Um, I have this little picture of a squid. Uh, so I have this stuffed animal. He's a squid. His name is Jeremiah. He's this like big stripy gray squid and I'd say that he's my favorite comfortable item comfort item or thing. I have him with me constantly in bed. I don't I don't just carry him around. <laughs> um, do you put the cereal or the milk first? I put the cereal obviously. Do you like dawn or dusk better and why? Um I like seeing dawn when I'm awake for it, but I'm never awake for it, so I'm going to say dusk. Zodiac. Uh, Zodiac? <laughs> What's your sign? I'm a Virgo. Have you heard of Pixie? They're a small but extremely talented music group, and I highly suggest giving their songs a listen if you have not. Uh, I have not heard of Pixie, or I'm assuming I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. P-I-X-Y. P-I... Yeah, that's all I can think of. Um... But I did pull up a tab on it, so I can look it up later. First of all, congrats on 10K. Oh yeah, this was originally supposed to be recorded for 10K on my other uh, my other account. Anyways, you deserve all the loves. Thank you. I have a very I have a few questions and a suggestion. I hope that it is all right. Okay, here are the questions. One, what is your favorite kind of weather? Um, my favorite kind of weather is 50s, maybe 60s. I hate the hot weather. Um, I like storms, but I don't like being out in storms, so maybe just like a bit cloudy, uh, overcast. You mentioned that you like seeing funny cars on the road. What is the funniest car you've seen? Definitely a PT Cruiser with racing stripes on it. I want that car so bad. Uh, number three, what is your favorite Minecraft mob and or Minecraft plant? Oh, I don't know the names of any of the Minecraft plants. I like the sunflowers because they face the sun. Um, well, they don't face the sun, they just face the same direction. Anyways, I like the Lily of the Valley. Those are cute. And my favorite Minecraft mob. 
Um, I'm hoping it doesn't have to be one of the hostile mobs. I like Endermen. I think they're cute. Um, as in terms of like the animals, I like the goats. I, I haven't done much with them. They kind of scare me. I'm afraid they're going to headbutt me, but I think they're cute. What is your favorite piece of art that you've made? Um, let me see. I, I don't think this is something I've, I don't think I've shared pictures of these on my VA account and I probably won't because I don't want to connect the two. Um, but I did a series of commissions for somebody last year that was mainly like fantastical jellyfish inspired per their request and that that was really fun to do. Um, do you plan to make more reverse comfort audios? And I'm not sure how to ask this and how difficult is it and how difficult it may be to do this request, but is it possible that you might make a self-harm comfort audio? Okay, so firstly, I do plan on making more reverse comfort audios. I think they're fun, but it is hard to be vulnerable with a microphone. Um, especially when I record in a public place, they're a little bit difficult. And as far as self-harm comfort, that's difficult. It's kind of similar to the dysphoria comfort in the way that things that can help some people will not help other people or could make it worse. So I don't want to take that risk. I would, I definitely don't feel like I know all that I need to in order to do it now and to do it properly. Um, and also, there's also the issue of like, it can help, but it can also like romanticize it in a way. If I'm using self-harm as a way to create a romantic audio, something about that doesn't sit right with me. And I need to look into exactly wasn't what doesn't sit right with me. Um, so the answer is maybe. Uh, it's not. It's okay if not, though. Anyway, sorry for such a long one, and thank you for all the wonderful content and comfort. Thank you for all the fantastic questions. Two questions. One, why did you delete your sensual domination video? I deleted it because I realized I was uncomfortable with it. Um, I made it when I was trying to step my toes into, like, maybe NSFW content, and, you know, recording that and having it online made me realize that I don't want content like that out there. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it still is on my Reddit right now. Um, but, yeah, I just realized that it's not something I'm comfortable doing. And also, as far as putting it on YouTube, um, I made a huge mistake. I did not find the author's rules for posting content. And they reached out to me and said they would not like their content on YouTube. So I, I took it down. Um, within minutes of them saying that, and that was a big mistake on my part. Um, so anyways, that's why. Are you going to do a face reveal? If so, when will you do it? I don't know. I don't think so. So I can't really answer when will you do it, because I don't think I'll do it. Also, I appreciate you for making these videos. They've helped me so much, and to be comfortable with my body. Thanks a lot. Um, that's fantastic. I love helping with body confidence, so I'm glad. Please share the last meme you've saved on your phone, or just one you're willing to share. Oh, I don't share memes on my phone, so I've uploaded the only two memes I have saved on my computer, which is <laughs> um, which is this meme. We got Squiet Mard, we got Splibbling, and we've got Squard. Uh, first meme, and then this one. No, Mr. Krabs, don't don't spawn the wither. I shared this on my um, Twitter a few weeks ago, but I <laughs> it gets me every time. It's just dumb. Um, do you have an image of the listener? Like, what's his personality? How tall is he? And overall, how he looks? Huh. I don't have a specific person in mind. I don't have, like, a character I've created to be the listener. So I don't... I don't think I have an image of who it is. Um, like, depending on the audio, I'll imagine different people, almost. Um, but it's never, like, an actual person. It's more just, like a vague idea of a person. So, uh, I don't. What are your hobbies or favorite hobbies? So, outside of recording and, like, my plant life, um, I experiment with a lot of art stuff. Um, I mainly do, like, acrylic painting. I've done some oil paints, but I can't stand oil paints. But I love fabric arts, like, um, embroidery and crochet and stuff like that. I like that you're very physically making something. I especially love embroidery because you can wear it around on you. Like you create art that you can put on clothing and then you're like decorating yourself. I think that's really cool. What is your favorite season and best season? Um, okay. I love spring because of the whole, all the plants are blooming and everything always looks really cool, but I hate hot weather. So early spring, 
late fall are my favorites. I cannot stand summer. It will always be my least favorite season. What is your favorite reptile? I hate to be boring, but I love ball pythons. I had one. Um, he was fantastic, super cute, uh, and I miss him. So, Who is your favorite person? That's uh, a hard question to answer. I don't really have a favorite person, but I'd probably say one of my siblings. Opinions on snails as pets. I've never had them. I have seen people who have those massive, like, Madagascar snails. Um, is that what they're called? I don't know. I think they're... <laughs> I think they're pretty funny to see people be like, oh, look, here's my pet snail. I don't know anything about how ethical it is to have one or how you get one or anything like that. Um, so my opinion is they're cool. Do you like toast with or without butter? Oh, it depends on what else I'm putting on it. I'm not, I don't like just plain bread. So probably with butter. What is your biggest pet peeve? Hmm. My biggest pet peeve, in all honesty is people telling you what you experience. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like, you know, like you've never gone through this or you've never experienced this or like you wouldn't understand what it means to, for this to happen and this to happen. Like just assuming someone's, like when someone assumes, oh my gosh, when someone assumes my experiences and the things I've gone through and the things I have felt, I hate it biggest pet peeve it immediately pisses me off and i you know I, i'll remember that when i talk to that person just like that they had made the decision to say something that intentionally invalidates anything i could feel so hey trans guy to trans guy all your really vi wow all your videos manage to scratch that itch like nothing else does your asmrs have been keeping me company through COVID isolation and friends ghosting me and whatnot I also appreciate you keeping things safe for work. Not saying I'll jump ship if you decide to change things, but it's like a breath of fresh air, you know. Yeah, no. Just want to hop in there to share some of the love you've been sharing with all of us. Take care of yourself. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I'm glad it could help. COVID isolation has definitely been difficult, and I know that ASMR has helped me through it, so I'm glad that I can give a bit of that back. Why did you pick Sunny? Why did you pick Sunny as your at name? And did you know from the start this is what you wanted to do? Um, I picked Sunny because I like the motif of the sun. I like sunflowers. That's pretty much it. I thought it was a cute name. Um, did you know from the start this is wanted, what you wanted to do? I don't know if you mean from the start, like I came out of the womb thinking I was going to be an ASM artist, or if you meant like when I started my channel. Um, so I didn't come out of the womb wanting to make boyfriend roleplay. Um, but I only made my channel with the intent of making it. So yes, I knew from the start of making my channel that this is what I wanted to do. Not like something I wanted to do when I was a kid though. <laughs> Did you know that you're really cute? Ha ha heart. Oh, I tried to make it with my hands, but obviously you can't see that. Um, <laughs> thanks. If you could only, if you could only have one of the following, which would it be? hands eyes or voice okay so i lose my hands but i probably still have my arms right eyes or voice if you could only have one of them uh, hmm that's difficult I use my hands a lot, but I think I could do fine without my hands. I could always get a prosthetic, right? Or, like, do I not have arms? Um, eyes. Seeing things is so incredibly useful. Like, I can't imagine not being able to drive and not being able to you know, experience the world in that way. I think it's crazy how, like, some people can. Um, you have to be super strong, I imagine, in order to be able to do that. Um, and the same with voice. But I'm probably going to say voice because i need the physical not the physical i need the the vocal reassurance and experience of talking to people too much to not have that um what is your favorite color of the alphabet uh, uh, uh seven does it annoy you that there is no reason for the alphabet to be ordered um i've never thought about that but now that you say that it does annoy me Optional, what advice would you give to someone who struggles to make friends but sees someone who seems cool and wants to talk to them but isn't brave enough to? Ooh, I don't have too much advice for that because I do the same exact thing. Um, so thank you, Harvey, for these questions. 
What is your comfort snack? My comfort snack is anything that's sweet. I love sweet things. <laughs> what is your favorite thing about what you study? Um, wow, I wonder if you guys can hear my computer. It just kicked up like a whole, it sounds like a rocket ship right now. Um, what's your favorite thing about what you study? I, I mean, I, I have studied plant sciences, so I love working with the plants. Easy as that. What is your favorite season? Like I said before, anytime when it's cold. What was your childhood dream? I wanted to be a doctor for a long time until I saw some of those medical shows where people were actually being doctors and realized I'd have to see, like, kids in pain. I could never do that. Would your past self be embarrassed or disappointed of what you've become? Oh, my God. Um, is it saying that the only options are embarrassed or disappointed? Or is it saying... <laughs> would you be embarrassed or disappointed? I am embarrassed of my past self, but I don't think my past self would be embarrassed or disappointed of me now. Firstly, as a trans man, I love your audio so much. Uh, I love your audios, and I'm so happy I came across your channel. They help me sleep all the time. Well, thank you, and I'm very glad. Um, my question is, would you ever consider getting into a game called Genshin Impact? It's extremely fun. Much love from Angel. Um, I have thought about maybe playing it, but I haven't played it. Uh, do you play Genshin Impact? And if so, who do you main? I don't play Genshin Impact. I've thought about it. M maybe. The community is a bit of a mess, though. Sorry. Um, hello, I've wondered that you are a high school or college student. I've wondered if you are a high school or college student. Um, I'm not a high schooler. <laughs> I'm not a high schooler. So I guess that only leaves college student as an answer. Got any games on your phone? Hold on, let me grab my phone. I don't actually know if I have any games. I don't keep any, um, let me see, entertainment, what's in my folder? No, that's just like Disney Plus. I don't think I have a single game on my phone. Yeah, no, it's kind of sad, unless you consider social media a game, which in case I have a lot of that. What's the first thing you notice when meeting someone? Definitely... I think their eyes, I think a person's eyes says a lot about themselves, not not like the color of them, but I feel like some people have really kind looking eyes, and I noticed that pretty quickly. How are you doing right now? Something good happened lately? Um, I'm doing okay right now. Something good happened lately. Um, I can't think of anything, like, fantastic that has happened lately. Oh, filed my taxes, and I will be getting money from the government. That is a fantastic thing that's happened lately. If you could visit anywhere, where would you go? I think, like, like before, I just want to leave the country. I don't really care where. Anywhere I have the opportunity to go sounds great. On Twitter, you paint your nails sometimes. Do you have a favorite color to paint them? Um, I normally paint them black. Right now I have black, but my middle fingers are golden. <laughs> Um, I just normally do black because it's typically the most socially accepted color. I've done blue, I've done yellow, and I think it's really cute, but it is hard for me to not feel dysphoric sometimes when doing it. Egg melon or egg fried? I have no idea what that's, what this means, but I do like fried eggs, so. Uh, would you ever collaborate with any other VAs or comfort content creators? I absolutely would, just, um, the opportunity needs to present itself. What is your favorite holiday treat? Eggnog. Oh my gosh, I love eggnog. Or this is kind of deep, sorry. What's the hardest thing you've been through? I don't know how to explain the hardest thing I've... Oh my gosh, I'm yawning. <sighs> sorry. I don't know how to explain the hardest thing I've been through in like a Q&A on a boyfriend roleplay channel. Um, so I might just skip over this question. So sorry. Um, thank you so much. Love your videos. They helped me a lot when I lost my dad. Well, I'm very sorry to hear that, but I'm, I'm glad... I'm glad they could help, and I hope that you're healing. Um, so thank you, Caleb. Hi, Sunny. First of all, I love you, and this is my question. When you make, like, waking up ASMRs, do you actually just wake up? A bit silly, but haha, -ha, curiosity. Um, I'm good at being tired, no matter what time of the day it is. So either I have just woken up, and I'll record it, or I will make myself incredibly tired and then record it. Okay. Hi, I've been listening to your audios for a while now, and they've helped me so much with a lot of things like anxiety, um, dysphoria, and especially getting things done like work, getting up and falling asleep. 
When, where do you get all the energy you convey through your audios? I feel like you share your energy and happiness with your listeners, and it's so fascinating to me. Surely there's something that drives you and makes you happy so you can help others, but what is it? Um, this really means a lot to me. Like, I'm glad that that can come across in my content. Um, as far as what, what gives me the, the energy and happiness I have... I'd say it's two things. It's, first of all, the fact that I know that people enjoy what I make and that it can help them and it can make them feel more appreciated or less insecure about themselves or stuff like that. That really um, makes me feel good. But also a lot of the times when I'm doing this content, I'm kind of sharing things that I wish I had heard more or that I wish I had experienced more. Um, And it's the hopeless romanticism again. Like, I feel like that that longing and just a lot of the feelings that I have, um, I think I can convey them well, you know. So, there's my answer. G. Uh, he's just smiling face. Oh, I smiled back, but you can't tell. Sorry. Uh, do you draw? Also, I love your handwriting from the thumbnails, and your voice is so calming. Um, I do draw occasionally. I'm not much of a pencil and paper kind of person. I'm more of a, a painter. Um, but sometimes, uh, and as far as my handwriting, I'm assuming this was on the old channel where I did the more pencil look. Um, so thank you. I enjoy writing out my thumbnails. It's also that I don't know how to properly edit a thumbnail, so I just write it out in a drawing program. So a lot of the things that are like unique and quirky about this channel are really just that I don't know how to do, um, the things that everybody else knows how to do. (laughs) How do you get your voice so deep? Um... Firstly, I don't really think my voice is that deep compared to other guys, so um, I I guess I appreciate that you think that, but I'm not sure where it comes from. If you're saying that my voice is deep for a trans person or someone who is assigned female at birth, that's a bit of a different question, um, and the answer is testosterone. <laughs> Why the name Sunny? Uh, because I like it. This might be a bit weird, but who is your favorite Disney villain? Also, you're amazing. Much love. Thank you. And my favorite Disney villain. I like the villains where you have to debate whether they're bad or not, but I can't really think of who is a good example of that in a Disney movie because Disney movies tend to be pretty, like, clean cut. Um, I like Mother Gothel. Just, I like her song. Not a good person, but, you know. What do you use to record? Um, this microphone, it was really cheap. Uh, apparently when I, apparently when I did this, it was around $53 on Amazon. Um, this isn't exactly the same one, but I think they just, it might be like the newer version of what I had, because the one I had, I couldn't find. Um, so $53, this is what I use, this is the brand, it looks pretty much like this, except instead of the circle... Um, I don't even know what this is called. See, I'm telling you that I don't know anything about audio recording. Instead of this circle thing, I have one that sits <laughs> sits on top of it. Um, and I looked yesterday just to check, and now it's like $80, but it apparently it was 52 I don't really know. This is what I use. Do you script any of your audios, or all they, or are they all improv? Love your stuff, by the way. Without a doubt, my all-time favorite ASM artist. All-time favorite. Wow, that is a, um, that's impressive. Thank you. Um, most of my audios are improv. The only ones I really script are when I'm like not in a good place and I feel like I can't, rec- uh, can't improvise something, or if it's kind of like a sensitive topic and I want to get everything right and not make a mess by trying to improvise it. So these are the th- three that are scripted, at least when I made this PowerPoint. So the period comfort for trans men, the first lap sitting um, reverse comfort, most recent boy comfort one. I don't know what that means, but I think the um, the like plus size listener one, that was also scripted. Um, what type of things do you look for in partners or qualities I look for in a boyfriend? Um, empathy lots of empathy uh the ability to be dedicated and the ability to be loyal um yeah i'd say those are the main things 
Who's your favorite bald man? Mr. Clean. Um, hey, Sonny, quick. How do you come up with ideas for your videos? Also, where do you find your motivation? Good day. Uh, good day to you as well. Um, how do I come up with ideas for your videos? I'm pretty much constantly brainstorming. Uh, so if something comes in my head and I'm like, oh, that's cute, I'll write it in my notes app and move it over to that big list I have eventually. Um, and I think I mentioned earlier about motivation, so I'm going to skip that. Pancakes or waffles? I love both. Pancakes are easier to make, so I'm going to say pancakes. If you were kind of bird, which one would you be and why? Did I put a picture here? No. If I was a bird? Uh, hmm, I don't think I'd be very majestic. So, not a very majestic bird. Are there any, like, round birds? I would be a very round bird. What's something you do to stay motivated and work on something even when you feel like giving up on it? Um, I'm very big on giving yourself breaks. If I can't record something, I'll just stop, give myself a day, maybe try again tomorrow. Um, I, I actually tried to record this yesterday, but I wasn't in the right headspace to do it, so... I waited until today, and, you know, that's kind of what I do. I'll wait till the next week if I need to. I'll do something else. I'll do something easy that doesn't require as much thought if I can't get my brain to cooperate some days. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Okay, okay. There's going to be a lot of questions, so please bear with me. <laughs> How does one improve their Project Diva skills? I haven't been playing it for long, and I kind of suck, but I remember you playing it in the first Game Clicky Noises ASMR video. Okay. I love Project Diva. Um, it takes time. I feel like just playing it, um, you have to do it to improve, mainly because you need to memorize exactly where the buttons are and how it, like, feels to do each combination. Um, like, the, the double combinations, you have to learn exactly where to put your thumb and stuff like that. Um, but once you get that memorized, then you can just blow through any song. Uh, favorite song at the moment? I'm sure you listen to bangers. Favorite song at the moment? I don't know my favorite song at this exact moment. Let me open my Spotify and see what I've been listening to. Um, ooh, The Communists Have the Music by They Might Be Giants. I've listened to that a lot recently, so I'm going to say that's my favorite song in the moment. Favorite video game and your favorite character from that game. I don't play too many video games, um, but I played Pokemon... What other video games have I played that actually have characters? I played Breath of the Wild, but... Mm, my video game knowledge is very limited. I'm gonna say... Um, favorite video game? Pokemon X. Favorite character from that game? Uh, Umbreon. Are you smooth like butter like a criminal undercover? Are you gun pop like trouble breaking into your heart like that? Um, I don't listen to BTS. <laughs> That's really all I have to say here. But I do know... That those are BTS lyrics, thanks to TikTok. Have you played Undertale or Deltarune? If so, who are your favorite characters? I haven't played all of Undertale. I've watched playthroughs of it, but I have played all of Deltarune. And um, I like Birdly, mainly just because I like his theme. What is the best movie you've watched? I haven't watched many movies, but I love Groundhog Day. Do you play any instruments? Uh, I do play a variety of instruments. I really enjoy them. Even if I'm not good at them, I like just trying a bunch of different things. So I have like a guitar. I have a couple different ukuleles. Like I have a tenor. I have a bass. I have a concert. Um, I also have like a kalimba. I have a melodica. <laughs> um, I love the melodica. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, is mayonnaise an instrument? Mm, I'm going to say yes. Why, according to all known laws of aviation, is a bee unable to fly? Why must their wings be too small to get its fat little bodies off of the ground? Um, but the bee, of course, flies anyways, because bees do not care what humans think is impossible. Love the bee movie. <laughs> Except for the whole, like, I don't know if it's bestiality, like, uh, <laughs> the whole bee-human relationship. I do like Ken. He's one of my favorite characters. Um, it's yogurt night! Sorry, what is your least favorite vegetable? Um, spinach. I hate spinach. And finally, what is the best kind of fruit juice? I really like mango juice. I drink a lot of that. Um, hi. Hi. I don't remember if you answered this in your last Q&A, but I wanted to ask you what your dream job is or what you hope to do in the general and future. In the future. Um, I would love to work in plant conservation. Like 
for the botanical gardens or something like that. So that's my dream job. Some of my favorite videos you've made are the ones where you read from a book. Do you have any plans to do more of them in the future? Uh, maybe. Yeah, I enjoy making them. Um, I haven't gotten too much um, attention for that. Well, how do you how do you say this? I haven't gotten too many, much interaction or something like that. So I feel like people didn't enjoy them as much as I enjoyed making them. Um, so I, I might make more in the future. Yeah. Do you like weighted blankets? I found they help with my sleep, but I've heard some of my friends say they can't sleep because of the pressure and stuff. Also love your videos, homie. Thanks, homie. Um, I do like weighted blankets. I have one that's like glow in the dark. It has stars and all that kind of stuff. Um, I do move a lot in my sleep, so sometimes it doesn't help because I just shove the blanket off or, um, I feel too confined and I get really fidgety in bed. Hey, Sonny, just a quick question. Was it easy for everyone to accept that you are gay? Um, c kind of both yes and no. Like, I feel like being trans really throws it in a loop because once I came out as trans, nobody knew what to expect from me. Either way, I'm gay in the eyes of, like, religious people. Either way, I'm sinning. Like, if I like women, then it's still an issue that I'm a trans man, so I'm a lesbian. Or if I like men, then I'm a gay man. <laughs> so either way, um, in that way, I haven't really had to come out to everybody that I'm gay. It just doesn't really matter anymore, you know. If I bring home a guy, I'll bring home a guy. Um, favorite color? Like, my favorite color? Ashy green, the color of matcha powder. Favorite animes? I don't really watch anime, so I don't have anything to say here. Favorite holiday? Um, I, I really do like Christmas, just because you normally see family and people are normally in a good mood. Um, not that I love the meaning behind Christmas or anything, but j just the Christmas spirit where everyone's just generally a little more happy, a little more excited. I like that. Uh, favorite animal? The anteater, obviously. Favorite ship from any anime? I can't really give a ship because I don't really watch anime. What video are you most proud of? I think I mentioned that earlier. What got you started on making this channel? I mentioned that earlier. What makes you proud about this channel? I think what makes me most proud is seeing people like me feel like they're getting representation or that they can get comfort from the stuff I create. You know, I, I want to give some of the diversity or give some of the representation that I feel like I didn't see. Um, sometimes it was a little uncomfortable to just be like a listener because it was really hard to find stuff that I related to or stuff that didn't make me feel uncomfortable. Um, so being able to create the diverse content I wish I saw makes me really proud. Favorite MHA character? I don't watch My Hero Academia, so I don't have one. Favorite character from any anime? <laughs> I don't have one. Final question. Did you know that you are an amazingly, awesomely talented, creative person? I didn't know, but now that you've told me, I know. So thank you very much. Um, I don't know if you already answered that, but I was wondering what you're studying. Thank you so, so much for being a cool dude. Lots of love from a fellow FTM. Uh, I'm studying plant sciences. How long does it normally take to come up with a video idea? This sounds so rude. Oh my god, it's not meant to. Um, I don't think it sounds rude, so don't worry about that. Um... It's not like I only ever have one idea and then I record that one idea, so it's hard to answer because I just, I do have a list of ideas and I kind of go through it and record whatever resonates with me m the most at that moment, but it definitely takes me a few days to decide what I am going to record that week. Um, what's the weirdest thing that's happened to you? Mm, I always have been very unlucky and have a lot of weird things happen to me, um, to the point where, like, partners have noticed it, and family has noticed it, and, like, my roommate has noticed it, so I can't really pick one, because I have a lot of very odd things happen to me. Um, also do more sub videos, I'm begging. I'm sure this is related to the, the sub space audio, in which case I've talked about earlier why I might not, or I don't really want to make more of those, um, but I'm glad that you liked it while it was here. If you could live with a TV, family, cartoon, or real, who would it be? Like, what family would I live with? Ooh. What is, like, a really nice, accepting family? I don't know. I can't think of many, like, TV cartoon families. I don't watch many TV or cartoons. 
Um, but my ideal family would be like like close knit. Like I want to have a good relationship with everybody. I want to be able to talk to them about anything that would be ideal like to not be afraid of having conversations with them but i can't think of an actual family that i'd like to be part of what's one thing that brings you a small moment of peace that someone else might find weird for example mine is driving on a smooth road or driving under an underpass when it's raining really hard driving under an underpass in the rain is (laughs) is a fantastic little little small moment um i like imagining that Um, I like the sound or like the moment when you're sitting in your car after a drive. It doesn't even have to be a long drive, just the moments before you actually want to get out of your car and you're just sitting there like listening to music or thinking about what you just did. Um, hopefully this isn't a weird question. I don't think it was. Oh, and remember to drink some water and eat. Thank you very much. Hello, kind sir. Hello, kind sir. Feel free to skip any of the questions and also sorry if these are repeats. Um, uni is kicking my butt, and I haven't had a chance to spend a day listening to the Q&As. I feel that. One, how are you doing? I am A-OK. Drop the skincare routine. I, oh my gosh, I'm pitiful when it comes to skincare. Hair care, I'm getting into. But, um, skincare, the only thing I do is moisturize and, like, wash my face. Three, any new plants? I haven't gotten any new plants in a long time, mainly because my living situation is tiny, so I don't have much room. Um, favorite Pokemon and or favorite starter? I love Umbreon. I don't really know why. He's just always been my favorite. Um, and favorite starter? Uh, that is a hard question to answer. I don't think I have a favorite starter or else I'd have to think about it for like a couple hours. Um, I've talked about my songs that I'm listening to right now. What's your favorite month? Oof. I kind of want to say August because birthday month, obviously. Um, but also it's so hot in August and I want to die every time it gets above 70 degrees. So I'm going to say October or November as far as like weather goes. Any new hobbies? I haven't really picked up anything new recently, sadly. Um, what cologne slash perfume do you use? Um, I don't use cologne. I use this deodorant called Minerals and Sage by Dove, uh, that I really, really like the smell of. So, there you go. Where do you apply the cologne slash perfume? <laughs> um, well, it's deodorant, so I wear it where you wear deodorant. Have you ever released an audio that you didn't like slash think was up to par? I have. Um, I'm not sure if it's that I thought the audios were, audios were up to par. It's just that I thought that people wouldn't enjoy them. Um, and a few of the times I've been proven wrong. Um, when I've released something that I felt bad about and people ended up really liking it. But, um, you know, I was worried when I put out some of the first ones that wasn't like super lovey-dovey, like nothing but pet names kind of audio, the first ones that were more situation-based because I wasn't sure how people would like them. Um, But people ended up liking them. So, yeah. Where do you, what do you put in your audios that make me so happy? Um, Crack cocaine. A pet peeve of mine, I think I talked about a pet peeve earlier, so I'm going to skip this one. And I'm also going to skip song recommendations, because I already did that. Uh, That's it. Very sorry for the messy question layout. My brain works funky. Me too. But thanks for reading these, if you did, and I hope you have a wonderful day or night. And I hope you have a wonderful day too. Do you consume a lot of ASMR slash comfort content? If so, what are your favorite categories or genres? Um, I definitely consumed more in the past. I'm just a bit busy now. Um, and my favorite categories and genres are, you know, the kind I make incredibly domestic, like established relationship content is my favorite. Do you have a favorite Pokemon or dinosaur? And if so, what is it? Um, my favorite Pokemon is Umbreon and my favorite dinosaur is the Quetzalcoatlus. I think they're absolutely terrifying. They're like the biggest pterodactyls you've ever seen. They are horrifying, but I also think they're cool. Since it's the season, what's your favorite thing to do during fall? Um, Well, it's not fall anymore for me, but that's my fault. So my favorite thing to do during fall is uh, drink eggnog and go out on walks. It's the perfect weather to do so. Um, How old are you? I'm older than 18. How tall are you? I hate this question. Um, I am incredibly short. I am five, two and a half. 
What's something that that triggers a happy feeling or memory? As an example, the scent of lime. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be lime or like linen. Makes me think of Christmas. Um, a scent that triggers a happy memory. This might be weird, but I really like the smell of like oyster stew and clam chowder, just because it's um like a childhood memory for me. Apple juice or orange juice? I'm gonna say orange juice, but I love both. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? That's hard. I want a food that has a lot of different things, and I'm gonna say parfaits. I love parfaits. I eat them for breakfast but like fruit and yogurt and some kind of grain and you can have like nuts for protein i think that would be a good choice because you could mix it up um if you don't already play one what instrument do you see yourself playing so i already talked about instruments i have but as far as an instrument i can see myself playing i i have a banjo that i haven't really learned how to play yet my um my grandfather got it for me. He's a <laughs> sweet old southern man who found it at an antique yard sale or something like that. I really would like to play it. Just, I think it would be interesting. Um, and the tradition, you know, at least around where I live, kind of dies out. So I think it'd be fun to play it. Um, maybe some of the old people would give me clout with the old people here. Um, so maybe one day I'll learn how to do that. How do you get to know yourself better? A lot of introspection and a lot of trying things and just seeing what makes you comfortable and uncomfortable. Uh, hey, Sunny, do you have a tip on how to be brave enough to be able to explore and express myself and be kind of comfortable with it? Oops, where did the question go? There it is. Um, hope was understandable. So, how to be brave enough? I feel like all my advice is very similar. It's a lot easier to make little steps than massive steps. So, I mainly take little steps and feel the waters, and if if I feel better, I'll continue in that direction. If I feel worse, I'll stop going that direction. That's kind of what I'd recommend in terms of exploring and expressing yourself, just trying out little things and seeing how they make you feel. It's perfectly okay to try something and not like it. Um, so, yeah. Do you have any special interests? Um, I'm not, as, as far as I know, special interest is a term that's normally used for autistic people. And I haven't been diagnosed with autism, so I'm not going to use the term special interest out of respect. Um, if you're asking about things I just enjoy a lot, then obviously my plants would be one. Um, there's like a few more specific things that I enjoy, like like Project Diva, and I really enjoy my um, like researching... <laughs> The, the various animals I find funky, but I'm not going to use the term special interest. If you dye your hair, what color would it be? Oh, I have dyed my hair in the past. I've had neon pink hair. I've had purple, blue, red. I've had more like blondish hair. Um, I'm okay with not dyeing my hair right now, mainly because I'm really getting into hair care and like taking care of my curls and... Um, hair dye absolutely decimates that, but I have always wanted to have silver hair, so maybe if I ever get tired of the the work that goes into curly hair and cut it all off, then I'll dye it silver. Hey Sunny, how to always be in a good mood, slash how to spread so much positivity and love like you do in your audios. You will never be in a good mood. No one will ever be in a good mood because we're all human and we all experience things and emotions are crazy. Um, so my tip to always be in a good mood is to let yourself experience the bad moods. If you keep them all bottled up in yourself, it's going to stay with you. It's going to stay negative. It's going to weigh down on you. So let yourself experience the highs and the lows and hopefully you'll find that things feel more balanced after that. Um, in terms of spreading positivity, I always, you know, try to think about what I would want to happen to me and things I would appreciate, and I try to do that for other people. Um, hi, Sonny. I don't know if this is too private. If not, what were your experiences in school? Were you an outcast or rather popular? I was not a popular kid. Um, I'm not going to say I was an outcast because I definitely had my group but my group was all outcasts, you know? <laughs> so, uh, question two, what are your thoughts slash expectations for the future for your channel, your business, and life? I don't know. 
I don't know where I'm going. The only thing I really know right now is that I'm going to um, finish school and try to focus on taking better care of myself, and whatever comes of that will come. So, hey, Sunny, are you as positive as you are in your audios in person or not? That's a difficult question. I think that I'm a, a, a decently positive person in real life, not as much as my audios, mainly because my audios are a character, and... You know, I want my audios to be positive, and like I said earlier, I'm not going to have the bad sides of myself in an audio. So, I'm not as positive in real life as I am in my audios because my audios aren't real. They aren't real life, and in real life, I have problems. Um, So, that definitely creates some negativity. Do you follow a motto or any kind of philosophy on how you approach things? Um, hmm. There's a quote from... Man of La Mancha. There's two quotes from Man of La Mancha that really mean a lot to me, and I think about them. Um, I think about them a lot. And the first one has to do with seeing life as it could be and not as it is. Um, the actual quote itself is something about like, perhaps to be too practical is to be madness. Um, well, is madness, and true madness is to see the world as it is and not as it could be. Um, and that resonates with me a lot. And then the second quote from Man of La Mancha is, um, it's from a song, and, um, it's talking about, like, building your life on dreams, and it says, if you build your life on these, it's prudent to recall a man with moonlight in his hands has nothing there at all, and it's kind of the opposite of the, of the other quote, where it's talking about how, um, the, the, the main guy in this musical is reaching for moonlight, like he's reaching for dreams that he can never physically have, but the point is that he keeps dreaming. So these two quotes kind of go together, you know, and it's seeing the world as it, as it is and not, I mean, seeing the world as it could be and not as it is. So like having positivity, having hope and always looking for better things in the world, but at the same time, keeping in mind what you have to do, you know, what, what realistic goals are and, um, stuff like that. So there you go. How do you classify yourself in the world? (laughs) Um, I don't know what kind of classification you're asking for, so I'm not really sure how to answer this. Um, do you have a life goal? I do not have a specific goal. I just want to be alive and be happy. Um, Part of the reason why I'm asking you these questions is because I'm questioning myself those, and I would love to see your thoughts on this topic, only if you want to share, of course. Thank you for spending your valuable lifetime to read my questions. Um, You're very welcome. These are really nice questions. I like them a lot. Do you feel comfortable with people under the non-binary umbrella listening to your audios? I know your content is specifically M4M since you're a gay man, but as a genderqueer AFAB person, it really helps my dysphoria. Um, No, I don't mind. The, the only thing I do mind with people who aren't, like, MLM listening to my content is when they feel the need to make it about themselves. Like, you'll see, um, you'll see cis women in my comments pretty often who are like, oh, for the next, for the next 12 minutes I'm gonna be trans, or for the next 12 minutes I'm gonna pretend like I'm a man. Like, that makes me uncomfortable, and it makes other listeners uncomfortable because I'm creating a safe space for people, and then you have felt the need to insert yourself into it. So um, that was just a little bit of a tangent. I don't feel uncomfortable with non-binary people listening to my audios. I welcome it, especially if it helps with your dysphoria. I'm really glad um, that my content can do that for you. Um, But it's always about being respectful of the space that you're in. So as long as you're respectful, no, I don't care. I don't mind at all. I don't mind who listens to my content. If you could only eat one food slash meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? I'm going to say parfaits. What is your favorite pun? Um, my favorite pun, I don't know if this is a pun, but it's just a really bad joke. Um, why could the little spicy pepper not practice archery? It's because he didn't habanero. <laughs> what is the pun you find most unbearable? I find dad jokes pretty unbearable, but in like a good way. So, if it's a dad joke pun, I'll probably hate it, but actually love it. What's your favorite ASMR video? I do not have one specific favorite video, so I'm not, uh, I don't think I can answer that. Can I be an ASMR artist one day? You absolutely can. Go for it. 
Hope you're having a beautiful day. Please say hi to your plant babes for us. I will. I've got 10 questions for 10K. What's your favorite type of food? I love a lot of foods, but I ultimately have a very strong sweet tooth. Has your favorite song slash type of music changed since last time? Um, since my last Q&A, not really. I just find new artists. Um, if you've ever played it, what's your favorite Pokemon? Umbreon. Do you ever have any book recommendation? Do you have any book recommendations at the moment? Um, there's nothing I'm reading at the moment, but those two Victorian flower language dictionaries from earlier are fantastic books. What's your favorite scent? Sorry if it's weird, but I always find what people answer interesting. I love lemoncello. And I don't actually know what lemoncello is. I just know there's a candle called lemoncello, and it's delicious smelling. Um, favorite type of environment? Mountains, beaches, forests, etc. Uh, cool environments, so not a beach. I like mountains. Mountains are cool. Out of those, I'm going to say mountains. Thrift stores or retail? I buy all my clothes from thrift stores, except if they're necessities, like um, underclothes or, or pants. I buy those because I need good pants. Um, what is your favorite painting or artist? I don't think I have a favorite painting, actually, or a favorite traditional artist. <laughs> I need to do more research. What is a random fun fact that you know? Um, that hummingbirds' tongues wrap around their skulls. If you could have any talent in the world, what would you want? Oof. I really wish I could dance. I think it would be really cool in order to dance with people and to create that kind of art with your own body. I'm just clumsy and stiff. Wow, that was the last question. <laughs> that was the last question. Oh, my God. Okay, well, we made it to the end. Um, I am very interested to see like what percentage of people actually make it here. I hope it wasn't too long, but okay, no, it was incredibly long. I just looked at the time. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. Well, I guess to tie this off, um, thank you to everybody who sent questions. Clearly, we had a ton of questions. It is just extraordinary to see that people are interested in the things I make and interested in me and, you know, enjoy my content and enjoy watching stuff like this. It really does mean the world to me. Um, and especially over the past few months, I can't say thank you enough for the support I've gotten, what with moving my channel and starting a Patreon and trying to figure out my upload schedules and all that kind of stuff. I really, 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 really appreciate it. Um, and I hope that by creating more content and by creating content you guys like, I can kind of repay you for that support, if that makes sense. So <laughs> with that being said, I won't draw this out any longer or let it get awkward. So thank you very much to everybody for listening. And I um, can't wait till next time. Bye.